Welcome to The Cut's Next Level, where each week we have a conversation with a trailblazer who is breaking the molds in their field. This week we are joined by a capital B-O-S-S, the founder and CEO of Beauty Stack, Sharmadine Reed. Hi, Sharmadine. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I am both tired but also hyped today. <laughs> That's why we love you. <laughs> um, what is Beauty Stack? Where did the idea for tech beauty business come from? So Beauty Stack is a social network meets a booking system. So the idea came from when my nail salon was at its peak, we would be getting hundreds of messages from all over the world, mm -hmm. screenshotting our Instagram account emailing okay. it to us and saying how much is this how long did it take and i would be answering yeah. these messages till like two in the morning being like it would be so much easier if everybody could just book the picture so True. i thought more and more about building this kind of tech solution for my own salon and then i was like well actually everyone needs this like you know gone are the days where you tear out a picture of a magazine or you're still showing screenshots of your phone to your hairdresser or your braid artist. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, wouldn't it be better if like, like let's say I flew to New York tomorrow. Oh, if only. And um, <laughs> you, know, I, you on Beauty Stag had a picture of your hair right now and I just clicked on your picture and booked it with the actual artist who did it. Like that's my long-term vision for it is that actually your recommendation of where to go in New York is way more powerful to me, you know, to me than yeah. either an influencer promotion or a Google advert or anything like that. All I'm essentially trying to do is digitize that centuries old phrase of where'd you get your hair done? What do you love most about the work that you're doing? It's magic. It's literally like, I imagined and it's there, it's magic. You code something, you refresh the screen, it's there. It's like it's magic. There. So yeah. that's, that's what I love about it. I'm like, wow, it's like, it's real. Um, but I also love seeing people tell me that they made money on my app. That makes me happy. Mm -hmm. I know there aren't many women in tech but there's also not many black women in the tech industry. How have you navigated being a woman of color in tech? Have you faced any challenges? Half of it's a mindset, right? Like so mm -hmm. much of it is when you walk into a room um, and you know that there are gonna be like five white men around a table that you have to pitch to. It's the mindset that you take into that room that is going to affect your um, delivery, your presentation, your energy and vibration. So irrespective of um, being a woman or being a woman of color, I have always focused on um, building up that confidence through knowledge. I just think that I've been thinking about beauty stuff for so long. I've researched the business model, you know, everything from how the data is structured to, you know, all of these different things that I've just like feel so confident about what I'm building. And then that emanates from me, which, which is really what people want to invest in. <laughs> it's funny because you know what they want to invest in is ambition, confidence, which comes from entitlement, which isn't something that we're given automatically. So I think what I've yeah. done is I've used knowledge to earn my entitlement to bring in that confidence and ambition. What inspires you to keep going? Because you do a lot. I know you're, you probably had a very busy day. Like what, what do you have to do to like keep pushing through? I don't push through which sounds okay. really counterintuitive to how my persona is. I am an incredibly productive person. I get so much done in a day that sometimes at the end of the day, like I shock myself how much I've done in the day. But I also have days off all the time. 
Okay. And this year in particular, because it has been so challenging to everybody's mental health, right, including mine, mm -hmm. if I am feeling um, like run down, low mood, I don't push through, I rest. I just rest all the time. Mm -hmm. The key for me anyway, is to just pause, to take a breather, to recuperate, because I know myself and I know that I always snap out of it. And it, you know, the yeah. most it will last like 48 hours. Um, and then I can like be excited again. And the key really is to remember the thing that excites you again. So for me, it might be talking to a customer makes me excited again. Um, talking to my investors makes me excited again or it might be something like taking a two-hour walk and listening to an audiobook or playing garage music and dancing around but <laughs> as long as you find the thing for you to help you recuperate it's about bouncing back rather than pushing through did you always imagine yourself owning your own business in some way? Like, what, what what was your dream job as a kid? When I was younger, I always thought I would work in fashion, be some form of like creative director, publisher. I always thought I'd have a magazine, um, you know, be in film, TV, not necessarily film, but like in media. I always thought I'd be in media. Yeah. Um, so this was definitely a huge diversion to go from like a fanzine to a nail salon to a tech company and you know it was a yeah it was a it was a very it was a curveball that i wasn't expecting but now i really really enjoy it it suits my personality yeah. type to be in technology because i like building new stuff all the time